I'm Justin Moore, and straight ahead on WV News, I'll tell you how the recent Rolling Stone article could affect victims of sexual assault. I'm Allie Brandfast, and straight ahead on WV News, I'm going to tell you how things you're seeing every day may be having a negative effect. Did you know that West Virginia ranks last for equal pay for equal work in the United States? I'm Nicole Ford and straight ahead, I'll tell you how residents feel about this inequality. Our award winning WVU News starts now. Rolling Stone is under scrutiny for the way it reported a sexual assault story at the University of Virginia. I'm Nicole Ford. And I'm Allie Brandfast. Did you know that 89% of women want to lose weight? We examine how the media contributes to an unrealistic body image. These stories and more in our special edition show, The Many Dimensions of Diversity. A University of Virginia fraternity is planning on filing a lawsuit against Rolling Stone magazine after they reported on a false sexual assault allegation by a student. Reporter Justin Moore is here to tell us how victims of sexual assault may now be afraid to speak out. Justin? Thanks, Allie and Nicole. According to a report by the Rape Domestic Violence Information Center, one in four college women will be raped by the time she graduates. There were 10 reported sexual assault cases on West Virginia University's campus back in 2013, and statistics showed there were many more going unnoticed. I found out how Rolling Stone's false accusations could affect the way women report these incidents across the country. Rolling Stone magazine report about an alleged attack on a female student at the University of Virginia. Rolling Stone is in hot water after falsely reporting a sexual assault case at the University of Virginia. The report details an alleged gang rape case that occurred in the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity, but the story was retracted on April 5th after a report by the Columbia School of Journalism highlighted what went wrong with the story. Some students feel this may prevent victims of sexual assault from coming forward. Every false accusation makes every legitimate accusation less credible. They think that they'll get this negative feedback um, and have the stigma that their um, assault has been invalidated. Every 21 hours, there is a reported rape on an American college campus. Of the women raped, only 10% report the crime. These numbers show there are more than 200 attacks on college campuses every day. Despite the negative publicity, WVU social worker Deborah Beasley sees a silver lining. Anytime sexual assault gets our attention, I think it's helpful because it is um, an underserved, you know, um, crime that we don't address often enough. While the number of reported sexual assault cases remains low, WVU recently launched the It's On Us campaign to lower the shocking statistics that go along with sexual assault. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, call the Morgantown Rape and Domestic Violence Center at the number below. Allie Nicole, back to you. Thanks, Justin. Sexual assault isn't the only issue affecting young people. Chasing the perfect body has become borderline unhealthy. 30% of high school girls have an eating disorder. What's more shocking, 16% of high school boys have the same disorders. I found out how the way we see people in the media affects the way we look at ourselves. Over 80% of Americans watch TV every day, but only 5% of people naturally have the body type that's shown on their screens. The 2013 Miss West Virginia Teen USA says she's felt the pressure to have a certain look. I did pageantry and it kind of took a toll on the sense of you have to fit this stereotypical body type image. You can't really be yourself. If you don't fit the mold, you kind of were thrown out and judged. The American Medical Association says Photoshop pictures are creating unrealistic expectations that can lead to serious health problems. Social and Behavioral Sciences Professor Tony Morris agrees with the AMA. I think it's really hurtful and I think it's putting um, an image that's not achievable out there and trying to convince our youth that that's how they should strive to be um, and it's causing them to hurt themselves. 
According to the Huffington Post, the average person sees about 5,000 ads a day. This contributes to the large amount of money women spend on beauty products each year. But when you take all of that away, 92% of women still don't feel beautiful in their own skin. Men feel the pressure from the media as well. One survey found that 38% of men would sacrifice at least one year of their life in exchange for a perfect body. If you're considering the, the ideal man as someone who is in the GQ magazine, uh, it's anyone who can, you know, step up to each uh, credential that, that GQ says is, is what is in style, what is in, in season, what's in fashion. Dove's Real Beauty campaign is working to change the way women are shown in the media, using women of all sizes in their advertising. Many women don't just struggle with an unrealistic body image, they also fight to be paid the same as men. President Barack Obama said just last week that men and women getting paid the same should be a no-brainer. So why is our country still so far behind? I found out how West Virginia is paying women less than the national average. Tuesday, April 14th marked Equal Pay Day in the United States, the unofficial holiday that symbolizes how far into the year women must work to earn what men had earned the year before. But what most people don't realize is this wage gap is still very real. It's not only an issue about women, it's an issue for everyone because that loss of income affects our economy and our communities both on a local, state, and national level. According to the American Association of University Women's Report, West Virginia falls 9% below the national average on wage equality, with women only making 69 cents to a man's dollar. West Virginia House Delegate Barbara Evans Fleischauer believes that women deserve the same as men. Women are um, reliable, we're hard workers, and if we get a college degree, we should have the, why should there be a difference? But unfortunately, this difference does exist. It has been over 50 years since the Equal Pay Act, yet by the time a woman reaches her 59th birthday, she will have lost nearly $800,000 in wages. And this gap is not projected to close until 2104. That's insane that it's going to be till 2104 before women will make the same as men and have these careers and have that presence in, in our workforce. Now women across the country are speaking out. They have taken to social media to express their concerns to help close this gap. They believe the key to moving forward is to educate and bring awareness to the issue at hand. While the wage gap seems like a never-ending battle, there is good news on the horizon. 63% of men agree that men and women should make equal pay for equal work. While activists across the nation are fighting for equality in pay, colleges are still striving to maintain equality in sports. Title IX was implemented back in 1972, and its implications are still felt today. Emily Jean Greco is here in the studio to tell us how Title IX is the reason for the many female athletes we have here at WVU. Emily? Thanks, Nicole and Allie. WVU currently has nine women's sports on campus. Since the signing of Title IX, women in college sports rose by over 600%. There are now over 190,000 female student athletes nationwide. I found out how Title IX continues to impact female athletes here at West Virginia University. Title IX is a federal law that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in schools that receive federal funding. From athletic opportunities to challenging schools to provide female athletes with equal access, Title IX has provided numerous possibilities. It's really empowering that women have the opportunity to do it now. I mean, 20 years ago, I probably would not have been able to be um, a female collegiate athlete. Um, so it's, it's really awesome that women, uh, powerful women um, in front of me have paved the way for me. Director of Equity James Goins Jr. says that some of the strongest leaders have come from women athletes and that Title IX is providing a whole lot more than just playing a sport. I believe there's certain confidence that, that come with it. There's certain leadership skills that are developing. You learn how to be a team player. You learn how to contribute and, 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 and obtain a goal. I think all those things are beneficials. With 19 varsity sports at West Virginia University, Title IX offers the opportunity for both men and women to extend their athletic career and possibly make it into the Hall of Fame. Not only has Title IX opened many doors for women in sports, but it's provided them with unforgettable memories. I think that will follow me for the rest of my life. It'll go beyond college, but I'm so thankful that I was able to come to college um, and, and have the opportunity to run. 
Although Title IX is well known for the athletic side of the law, it also has nine other key areas that also provide equality for women. Without Title IX, WVU may not have some of the many women's sports moments, including women winning the Big 12 in soccer this past season. Allie Nicole, back to you. Thanks, Emily. 74% of Americans use social networking sites every day, but not everyone goes online to post selfies and baby pictures. Shannon Butler joins us next from Social Square to tell us how one website is tracking the amount of homophobic posts on Twitter. Have you seen homophobic language being used on social media? I'm Shanna Butler, and coming up next on WVU News, I'll be telling you about one website that's keeping track of this. We're all different. Our interests, our backgrounds can influence our futures. But without focus, they're just dreams. But what if someone could give your interests life? If they could give your background power? If they could fuel what motivates you? That's what gives dreams meaning, purpose. And perhaps that was the moment you knew you wanted to be a mountaineer. Words are used every day to spread hate around the world, but one website is tracking how much they're used on Twitter. NoHomophobes.com finds that people use gay slurs over 150,000 times every week on Twitter alone. Shannon Butler joins us now from Social Square with the latest in social media and pop culture news. Shannon. Thanks, Allie. Nicole, statistics show that high school and college students hear homophobic slurs around 26 times per day. I found out how people are reacting to the shocking statistics revolving around this website. 92% of LGBT people say they hear homophobic language frequently. And now a website called NoHomophobes.com is tracking how many times these slurs are used on Twitter. One WVU student hopes that this will help our society become more accepting. We have to change the culture. We have to change what people perceive as gay, not gay. We have to change how people speak. And that, that's going to be really hard to do with this generation. You have to start kind of fresh. According to the Pew Research Center, 40% of the U.S. population is not accepting of homosexuality, and Twitter only makes it easier for people to express their views. NoHomophobes.com tracks four different homophobic slurs, and in an average day, the website tracks around 18,000 tweets that contain these negative phrases. With the alarming numbers this site is showing, it is no surprise that 84% of LGBT students reported being called names. One WVU student, Zach Tyler, told me how these negative terms make him feel. I've known I was gay my entire life, and for them to use it in a negative sense, it, it makes me really sad. I'm, I don't think I'm a negative person. I don't think that the other LGBT community is negative as either, so it shouldn't be used in a negative way. NoHomophobes.com not only shows how many times a term is used, but it also displays the Twitter name that used it. Zach Tyler thinks that if more people knew about this site, they may be more careful about what they say. I, I think people think they're getting away with it and that there's no repercussions from it. While prejudice still exists thanks to sites like these, 77% of the LGBT community say things will get better. Experts say words like the ones used on this website contribute to 80% of LGBT youth that suffer from severe social isolation. Allie Nicole, back to you. Thanks, Shannon. Morgantown is known as a college town, but there's plenty of culture if you know where to look. Morgantown offers cuisine from countries like Kenya, Taiwan, and even food from the Middle East. Whether someone is looking for burritos, sushi, or something more exotic like curry chicken or cow kamu, there are many places someone can go to fill their cultural appetite. Some of the places offer up a tasty treat to go, while others are a great place to take a date. Morgantown culture reveals itself through your taste buds. Ogawa's Japanese restaurant was even rated the third best place to eat in Morgantown by TripAdvisor. Well, that's going to do it for our WVU News Special Edition show, The Many Dimensions of Diversity. You can visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube, and please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Allie Brandfast. And I'm Nicole Ford. Thanks for watching our final episode of WVU News. We'll see you next semester.